What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage with a very special guest today, Jason. Uh, are you as excited as I am? Oh, my gosh. Anytime that we have a chance to have this guest on the show, it is it is anticipation uh, for the upcoming year. So it seems well, like it's been a, quite a long time. So it, I'm really it, excited. It is the first time he's been on the show since the uh, last time he's been on the show. That's true. So, uh, which is very true. Um, and as he likes to do every year around this time is our annual reviews. Yes. So uh, we are we have our EP Tom here today. Uh, who asked to join the show about a half hour ago. So we uh, we gladly uh, sent him the link, and here he is. So welcome to the show. Well, I'd like to say it's good to be here with all the nice buttering up you did, but I already filed your reviews, boys. You know, wow. it, doesn't, it doesn't make a difference with our sponsors and or our paychecks, so you can go file uh, wherever you well, want. Well, I mean, it goes with our emotional paychecks. Emotional? Do you have one of those? I get an emotional paycheck from this show, and sometimes, you know, I get a little raise. Sometimes I get a little bit of a, you know, lowering of my wage, and it, it hurts. It hurts. That's very, that's very astute, very well thought out. I'll give you that. So, and we have to consider too that this is an inflation year, so you know, we have oh. to be very careful about how these evaluations go. Yeah, no kidding. You know what? You know what annoyed the shit out of me today. Just on a side note. <laughs> um, Gas or oil, barrels of oil are finally below a hundred dollars a barrel. Yes, and gas prices are not dropping. They've been dropped. They, they have dropped. Oil has dropped twenty percent over the last week, and the we have only seen prices continue to rise. So, where is the the break we're supposed to be getting? Is I guess is my question. Mm, very good, very good question. Um, I've been asking that question for a long time now. Um, you know, we're we're officially a net exporter of oil now, the United States is. So that means that we are exporting more than we're importing. Um, um, Shell, ExxonMobil, Phillips, Chevron. Um, maybe we need to get them on the show and explain why we keep getting prices going up when we export more than we import. Oh, that'd be nice. It'd, it'd be just nice to get some kind of relief for the pump. Denise and I had to come up with a plan of whose vehicle we take whenever we leave town. And spoiler alert, unless we need to use my truck outside of city limits, my truck does not leave city limits now. Oh, wow. Okay, so you, you just made a conscious decision that her car will be the long-distance travel car. It, well, it, you know, it makes sense because she has that little turbo Hyundai. Um, it works better. It gets better gas mileage. And, and she was complaining when she had to spend $50 to fill up her tank. <laughs> I laughed because I have a 36-gallon tank, so... I told her I stopped at 120 just so I could make sure I had beer money this week. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, Scott. Yeah, I mean it's not it's 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 not fun to drive right now. No, no, uh, and you know they they I read a story somewhere that they said that anything over four dollars a gallon would actually start to make people make a a conscious decision about whether they would use alternative vehicles or drive less or take a bus and and I thought to myself, well. One, we've already passed four dollars a long time ago. Two, in Kingman, what are really your choices to do alternate transportation? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? There's not like a, a great bus system that you can get anywhere in town, you know, relatively timely. Like at least in Phoenix, we have buses that are going all the time. Oh. You know, I can get I can go right down the street to catch a bus that takes me right downtown. I mean, I could do that. I wouldn't. But I could. Yeah, I mean, we have we have the cart system here, which is a local a local bus where the city runs. But yeah, it's it's the same it's the same you know thing. We don't really have a lot of mass trans transportation um, options, and you know, really driving driving by Maverick every day, multiple times a day, because I live down the street from it. Um, I have not seen the gas pumps slow down, even with the, the spiked prices. People still have to, yeah. they still have to drive around here. It's just the way it is, so we have yep. to make do. I know. I know, and 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 I we're de- we're in the same boat. I mean, well, we were talking about it ourselves, and it's like, well, is there really a price that we would say, you know what? Okay, now we are going to be taking the bus, and the answer was no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Share or ten dollars a share, ten dollars a gallon. Okay, <laughs> it's going to yeah. hurt, <laughs> you know. I, but that that's just what we got to do. I mean, you know. I mean, that's really what it came down to for us too. It was. All right, well, both Denise and I work across the field from our offices now, so it's really not – we could always walk to work if we had to. But then they're still getting the girls from daycare. It's doing the other things that life makes us do. 
and that's hard. You know, I guess you could start working from home too, and that would really drive the the working from home issue again. So, you know, really, if it's not one thing, it's another around here. Yeah, yeah. We had a story on the news today that was talking about a guy who's creating a, um, a, a housing development, probably like apartment or something like that, where it's uh, basically no cars are allowed. You can only use electronic bikes. Um, and he was proud of the fact that, you know, this is going to be such a great community. And Marie just got so cynical, like, uh, how do you take your dog to the groomer? How do you go grocery shopping? How do you go to Home Depot and pick up lumber? Well, you, you know, park on the edge of the bike. community. That's how you do it. Yeah, you, you put you put it self-sustained, maybe. Maybe that's how you do it. She got savage with that. Well, yeah, you know, she it, was not happy. Th- there are there are drawbacks to those electric bikes and whatnot, too. Uh, Josh, my barber, who's been on the show, uh, a friend of the show, uh, actually wrecked his his electric bike going under going under one of those uh, underpasses for for walkers around here the other day ended up fracturing his wrist and uh, tearing ligaments in his hips oh shit yeah um this is also after he he did it the modifying his electric his electric bike so i think he was going a little bit faster than they probably uh, oh oh. (laughs) yeah but when you modifications you they do not put that on the disclaimer you change something it's on you (laughs) yeah well when you hit when you hit a rock patch on cement man you slide so you know you got to be careful those electric vehicles too just because they're cheaper to operate doesn't mean they're cheaper in the er when you have to go yeah yeah I, I, yeah that makes sense that makes you sense know. i don't know so tom you're here today i mean we do have topics but if you want to go ahead and go first well I mean, yeah you know this year it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a rough one boys i'm not gonna lie uh scott you know what? You've really done well this year. You've grown as a person. I've, I've really enjoyed listening to you grow as a as an individual and into a quasi legitimate male role model. Yeah, it's not get crazy for for Janice's girls, and I, I've really appreciated that and kind of how open you've been in the um, in the in the whole podcast here. Unfortunately, though, I do have to mark you down mm-hmm. for the Suns. Um, you did not cheer hard enough, so they lost in the finals. Um, so well, that, that hurt, you know, that so. blows because, you know, if they're not going to call fouls on Giannis when he's taking three steps in the lane, yeah, and throwing I, elbows. I mean, that's, I, a... I mean, I, you were, you were tasked with making sure it was a clean series and well, yeah, fuck whatever. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 plus it's also the first love of sports team. So double, double loss of points. Uh, secondly, the Cardinals back half of the season fade after K one came back from his injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're also your responsible for that. Yeah, yeah. that was totally That's... your fault. I, I, I didn't want yeah. to say it, but I concur. You well, know, just, fine. just just wait, Jason. Your your turn is next. Oh shit! Can, can we can we give some props though? It's the first day of the legal tampering period of NFL free agency, Christian Kirk signed pretty much a record contract. I don't know if you boys saw. He's going to make eighteen million dollars a year. Oh, congrats, Kirk! Uh, for never even having a thousand yard season. Well, wow. Like, the downside is he's going to Jacksonville. Well, that's you know what? That sounds like something that Jacksonville would do. Uh, Kirk is a great number three. Yes. Uh, anyway, on with the show. Go ahead. Yeah, anyway, all right, Jason. Yes. Dude, this okay. year you have been awful. I mean, it has just been the absolute worst. I mean, their topics have been not even timely. They've been crusty at best. It is just – I just – it's like – you you looked at the Rams and they everything that they did to win the Super Bowl, and then you did the exact opposite. Oh, I mean, wow! I mean, wow. That, that's that's that, just, that's legit. That was, that's legit. Okay, that wow. that was. I mean, it was painful to watch the Rams beat the Bengals when the Bengals were clearly America's sweetheart team, and they had built it and they'd scrapped and done so well, and then the Rams went in and just you know did the thing in their own stadium and i just you know and honestly that's why scott wins for the second year in a row because oh, the rams won damn. the super bowl so yeah you are you are back in you are you are in the lamb house you are back in the lamb house you can hang out there with the sea chicken oh uh, god yeah, the, the I, ref- yeah, I tried so hard dude damn yeah and you know so you you're, you're going to be out there in the in the jp uh, sea chicken house because oh. winners get to live in the big house with Scott in the Ralph Field Memorial uh, football watching room. 
Uh, oh. just happens to be painted a little silver streak across the top in memorial of Ralph and his love of the sea chickens. The sea chickens, that's right. Yes. So damn it. I was oh. so you know, this year I tried so hard. It's... I was like, I'm gonna listen more. I'm not gonna interrupt Scott. I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna do the things the EP has been hounding me on. And I still can't beat you, I, Scott. I think you've been doing a good job, though. I think I think you've had time. I think you've had timely topics. What you've talked about, you've had some some thought provoking uh, conversation starters. I don't I don't totally agree with with uh, <clears throat> Tom's comments, but you know, uh, some 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 topics have been harder than others. But you know, I haven't exactly been lighting the world on fire either with that. So it's a two way street. Yeah. yeah, but I think you win the kudos for being such a good role model. That does kind of propel you. I don't. I can't be a good role model to anybody right now. So, you know that that's probably a little bit in your favor that I can agree with. Yeah, that I ha- that I have two small children living in my house that I have to make sure I watch my pews my p's and q's for. To yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's fair. Yeah, you have you you have that. I don't. So I can curse. I can walk around naked. I can do all the things that that I've become accustomed to doing. That you know. Well, no, I just didn't do it in. It's, oh. That's just weird, Jason. No, I'm not so, sorry. Really get in. That's yeah, fine. that's that's so. Yeah, this was already a difficult enough conversation. Now you yeah. just gonna make it weird. That's, uh, you know, now, was EP even worried that maybe the difficult of the conversation might have pissed me off to the point that I went, you know, crazy? Oh no, no. There's okay. 900 miles between me and you. It's fine. I have at least an 18 hour head start if you drive, but you're smart. That's true. You probably fly. So six. So six. Yeah. 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 You do. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's, that's true. Pending the availability of a flight. Oh, pending availability of fuel and, yeah. you know, enough room on a credit card. I got a diesel yeah. pickup. Boy, yeah. yeah. You do definitely have to have a high credit limit right now for airline pick tickets. So, yeah, you're right. The, the, you would have definitely a buffer head start on me if I were to go crazy. You know, you know, it's it's funny you mentioned the, uh, you had some key words there today. And that's a good idea for us to talk about this today. Is is difficult conversations? Uh, they happen a lot more than than people might realize. But it takes a lot of interpersonal strength to have those difficult conversations. You know, what would be what, what classifier start the conversation? What what's a difficult conversation? Like what would be what would be categories as difficult? Well, you know, I guess it really depends. Um, Sometimes annual reviews can be difficult conversations. I mean, it's an easy example of hanging fruit. If if you don't, if if you don't if you know someone's not going to get the best review, and you have to give it, I mean that that could be very difficult. Um, talking about financial matters, uh, relationship issues, breakups. You know, there's a lot of difficult conversations that can be had. Oh, gosh, I'm just going through my head of all the difficult conversations i've had in this life so far and yeah they're brutal they're oh, yeah. brutal uh yeah you know Personally, on so many it. different levels because you know first of all like there's such a wide range of difficult topics you know like mm-hmm. breaking the news to someone that um the loved one has passed away yeah uh versus breaking up with someone um versus firing someone you know what i mean like the, yeah they're all they're all kind of they all have a different aspect of what makes them difficult yeah i'd agree with that yeah yeah, yeah. you know it, it, like it's it. I, I guess depending on on what you're talking about with, with who really i mean do you shy away from those or do you or do you kind of lean into it realizing it's you're, you don't mind doing because it it's what's what's for best the best uh, for business Mm. Uh, for me, I think the, the hardest part I run into is balancing what's in my best interest for impact that it's going to have on the person I'm having or the group I'm having the discussion with. Um, it's really easy for me. Like I've had breakup discussions yeah, and it, it, it's, it's easy for me to say, look, I have to have this conversation because, you know, it's in my best interest to get away from this relationship Although um, on the other side, I have a tougher time with those because I'm really easy to sacrifice my own benefits to appease or make someone not hurt or not feel bad. And so I'm sure I've stayed in relationships longer than I probably should have uh, yeah. because I wasn't willing to hurt that other person. Yeah, I, I think when it comes to relationships, it, it takes a very big person to be able to sit down and have that conversation because if, if it's not working or what or, or whatnot 
uh, just going with it because you're afraid to hurt their feelings or what they might say in that conversation isn't doing anyone any favors. Have you ever had to um, reveal a secret about that you found out about someone to that person? Oh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, have you ever had to like you found out something that was like a friend was going to get fired, for example? I'm just using that as good, like an example. A coworker you found out is going to get fired. Mm-hmm. No, I've, have you, I've have never you ever had, had to... to tell someone, hey, I heard that you got fired or did you keep that a secret? Like, I can't tell the person that I got fired, you, you, that they're getting fired. Uh, yeah, I've had to keep that, that that to myself, but that's that's what happens when you get the management versus you know, staying in the, in the rank and file, you know? Yeah. You know, and that, that's the hard thing to do too. Cause that puts, a, I put, that can put a strain on your relationship with individuals and having to draw that line, you know, professionally, you know, some people just can't do it. One of the toughest decisions I had to make was uh, when I found out that a friend of mine had a, a loved one who was having inappropriate relationships outside of their relationship. Uh-huh. And I had to find a way. To, I had found out some information that he didn't know about. The girl obviously kept it a secret, but I had found out and I had to make the decision. Do I tell the person who's being affected by this or do I keep it to myself? Uh, and uh, that was one of the toughest decisions, hard discussions I ever had to have. You uh, know, that, that's a that's a, a bro code conversation. And according to bro code, you do, you did do the right thing. Well, it it was, I have to admit it was difficult and I'll tell you why, because when I first heard the information, I I had questions about the source, Mm -hmm. you know, how they talk about the newspaper articles. You got to get, you know, verify your sources before you just release a story. Yeah. That's what I felt like is that I had to verify the source. And when you hear a, a rumor like that, it's really hard to validate or verify that source. Yeah. No, I... You know, so, so it was probably, it probably took me three, four weeks before I said anything. So think about this. I'm, I know what I heard. I'm now looking at this relationship totally different than I did prior to hearing it. I'm looking at a, a, a one person who is, you know, I care about and they're having this bad thing happen. I'm looking at the other person that I cared about, but now I'm like, wow, that says a lot about what kind of person you are, you know, but I'm, it's all this stuff about keeping a secret. Um, it, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough time for me. I, I was really torn up. I was really torn up. You know, um, I, I know, I know which one you're talking about without going into d- d- detail. And yeah. Uh, I, I also remember, I, I can't do to talk about that too. Cause I, I saw firsthand uh, the infidelity going on and, uh, I'm glad you brought it up so I didn't have to, to be honest with you. Well, and, and that was, I mean, at the time, that was kind of the, there was, a, that was the thing that was so str- strug- I was struggling with is that so many people had an idea or knew what was going on. And so I was thinking from the person who was being negatively impacted by this activity, they were upset. Like, well, if everyone knew this was going on, how come no one told me? Yeah, and I can understand. And 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 I was like, I get it, but you're not seeing it from my perspective. This is a really difficult decision to do, right? I mean, because yeah. my words, if I'm not completely right about this, you damage it's a problem. Really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a ripples. huge problem. Um, and uh, and so yeah, that was probably one of the toughest decisions I had to make, you know, and. And I struggle with it because I am really good about keeping a secret. Like if someone says, hey, I'm going to tell you something in confidence, I don't tell anybody because they told me in confidence. And there have been times where I've even gotten caught with with Noreen. Like, well, how come you didn't tell me that? Well, because the person told me this in confidence. And unfortunately, I take that kind of seriously, even when it comes to you. And she got mad at me, of course. But, you know, I take it seriously. You know, that, That makes sense. What about you? What about you, uh, Tom? Have you come across this uh, difficult conversations more than just professionally? Yeah, only on the breakup side. And it's a very interesting dichotomy between like you two are talking about being considerate of other people's emotions. Uh, I think of 
the most mature breakup conversation I ever had was they broke up with me and uh, she just wasn't into it. And, oh, okay, well, I'm glad you found out. Okay, thank you. Flip side, the worst one I ever had was I have a thing of being of total candor. Like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm just going to tell you the way it is. And you two see that every week with the note. Yeah. By the way, that's me being polite. That's um, <laughs> Yes, we see that candor every week, and we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, but, speak for yourself. <laughs> but go the, ahead. But yeah, but you know, speaking with total candor, it's like I'm not. This is not a thing I want to do anymore. I don't want to be here. That turned into that was about a two week breakup, where I had already checked out and I was gone, and I'm like, I don't need to be in this relationship anymore. And she wasn't getting it. Wasn't getting it. And it was, I think we talked about this. She refused the breakup. She, yeah, no, she, she straight up refused the breakup. And I, and I turned right around and said, no, you are, you are out. Um, the, the, the downside to not sugarcoating it was, it was very brutal for her. The, the upside was there was no question in her mind. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. And, that's good. I have, that's, I have a follow up question to that, though. Go for it. Um, what was her reaction when you dropped her stuff off at her apartment? Um, not great. Is this the one that you didn't know where she lived? That was that was several months after the fact, and she met me out in front of the manager's office. But yeah, it was that one. <laughs> we colloquially referred to her as three cap. Um. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's its own episode with a QA. and a And it's been it's been long enough that we're not going to go there. I think we covered it in season two anyway. Yeah, I think so. Anywho, but kind of but the other the flip side is so you both talk about a mutual acquaintance by the sounds of it that was in that was doing things outside of the the committed relationship. And as you were talking through that, my kind of my thought process was, this is the ultimate no win situation. I'm an asshole. If I do say something, I'm an asshole. If I don't say something. And as I'm thinking this, I'm like, oh, I've got a friend in Phoenix that has been doing this for the last two years since basically COVID started. Um, And he's, he's a little bit older than me. And I was like, uh, thank God I moved because I don't have to be in this situation. It's purely a friendship over text at this point. And I'll have beers with him next time I, I roll down and see what's going on. But last I heard the thing was over. But it was like, what? Why would I do that? Because he, you know, later in life, he's a little bit later in life. So, you know, mid 40s, he's got his retirement. His wife's got a retirement. They've been married for 20 plus years. And it's like, there is no good that comes from that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like, I just kept my mouth shut and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not saying a word I am going to. And, you know, I was able to remove myself from the situation because of other life choices I made. So that was easy, but you know, like what, what are your thoughts on that kind of situation? You know, somebody had been married 20, 25 years, their, their entire lives are intertwined with one another. And then, Oh shit. I mean, do you get involved or do you go, you know what? I'm going to remove myself from the situation and, and, and just step away. I mean, what do you, what do you, I mean, that's, that's this, cause that's a different kind of difficult conversation. Like I can't be a part of this or I can't be part of this. Like, Oh, I don't put myself in that position to where I have to answer any questions from either side. Oh, see. So yeah, you'd remove yourself from the situation. You just disappear. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I struggle with mine because uh, my thought, you know what I kept coming back to me is if he, if they would have found out that I had known and not said anything, he would have been more devastated that I didn't say anything than the repercussions that happened because I said something. Ultimately, it did come down to I was able to validate the original source. I felt comfortable that the second source I trusted, I knew that person, they wouldn't just make this up. Um, and ultimately, I did, um, I did reach out to them and, or to him 
and I, I told him what I had heard, what was going on. Um, he did validate and verify that, yes, it was going on the way I had ex explained it. So ultimately, um, it kind of, it, 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 it proved that while it was painful for him to find that out, um, you know, he at least was thankful that it didn't go on for five, ten years. Oh, yeah. And then he found out, oh, hey, by the way, Jason knew the whole time. And I, I think that's where I, I just drew the line to say, you know what? I don't want to cause a problem. I know it's going to be painful. This is awful. But on the other side, it would be far worse if, if they had, you know, gone on for 10 years, let's say. And then he found out and he found out, oh, yeah, Jason knew the whole time. Because then well, he'd look at me as not only did you not only did you know that this was happening and let me endure this for ten years, but you didn't even trust me as a friend to even say anything. And uh, so ultimately, I I did pull the I, I did make the call. Um, once again, we're the topic is tough the tough talks, right? Um, it was a very difficult talk. In hindsight, uh, I, I once I found out the second source it was kind of, it made it that much easier. You because, know, I, you know, at some point, don't you have to, you also have to trust, Hey, I'm going to give you some bad news, but I'm also going to give you the truth. And I have to trust that you're going to respect the truth. Cause I was really concerned that it might've come back at me like, Oh, you're just trying to ruin my relationship. You're, you're just talking crap. And, and, and I had worried about that. Um, so I took a leap of faith, but I, I had to trust that they were going to accept the, the truth from me and do something positive with it, but that's no guarantee either. Yeah. You know, sorry, I, I mean, go ahead, Scott. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, just... that's fine. No, you, you had a, you had a very good thought, but I think it, you know, it had, you mentioned earlier that had you been in that conversation, that situation for a long period of time, I, I believe the proper thing to do, at least the thing that I would do is if it's an unavoidable situation that you have to be with these people around these people, um, I don't have to say anything, but I can make sure I, I do my best to put you in spots where you're going to, you're going to slip yourself up. You know, I don't know, Scott. I, I have to, you know, I'm recalling back a conversation we had on one of the podcasts a few years ago where, and I don't know if we were talking about infidelity, but I remember very vividly that you said that if you had found out that I was cheating on Noreen, no holds barred, man. I'm talking, I'm telling Noreen. Oh, that's different, though. I've, well, what, what's the difference? That's this is exactly what we're talking about. This is um, exactly actually, what we're I'm, talking I'm with about. Jason on this one. Yeah. What's the difference here? What's the difference on, on that one? Uh, you know, that's a good point. I, I, I have a special place in my heart for Noreen, so I wouldn't want her to go through that. Uh, and yeah, I'd probably have to come out and just say something straight up, I guess, at that point, too, the more the more we talk it out. But if, if you're trying to stay uninvolved, then that's that that's that weird situation, you know? Yeah, maybe it's the proximity of the person that you're dealing with. Someone yeah. who's immediate versus... I found out that some couple that I rarely ever hang out with is doing fuck. I don't care. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like do whatever you're going to do. But if it's like, like uh, a family member or a close friend, you know, here, here's another question, Tom, in a situation like that, like in my situation, I went to the person who was being, uh, who was having the, you know, who had the spouse who was doing something inappropriate the other option is you go to the person who's have, doing the inappropriate thing and you confront them. Which way do you go on that decision? You know, I, that's a really good question. And I think that's a, I think that's a game time decision. Um, you know, kind of, kind of, so being the single guy, I, my friends come in one of two varieties. I'm either friends with the couples I'm friends with one of the couple. Um, case in point is uh, my buddy DJ, who Scott knows. Uh, his wife was having an affair, turned up pregnant. Um, I was friends with DJ, and like his wife tolerated me because you know I was mostly harmless. Um, the, the, and this happened ten years ago. Now there was talk at one point from other mutual acquaintances of, Oh, maybe we'll reconnect with her because the kids are about the same age. And that was one of the few times where I was like, ah, no, 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 no. She made her bed. She gets to sleep in it. 
on her own. But you know, like if it's if it's if it's a couples, like I can think I can think of of several other friends where I'm friends with both people equally, and it's like if I found out one was being unfaithful, like I. I don't know what I would do, but like, if it's, if it was a case of like DJ and I found out, I'm like, it would be literally, Hey, let's go get a beer. Hey. So I heard a thing and I've had to, I had to go corroborate it by five other people. So I'm fairly confident in this. So if I'm wrong, call me an asshole. But if I'm right, I'm still an asshole. And I'm the one that you found it out from. Oh, that's yeah. That's good. What about you, Scotty? Um, in, in, I would honestly go to the non-cheating party and, and yeah, tell them once I've corroborated it. You know what? I, I, now that I, I'm recalling that conversation we had, uh, I think you said it best because you said, "Oh, I'd go to Noreen right away," and I went, "Wow, you'd go to Noreen right right away." Of what about our friendship? And you said it best, and now I'm recalling because you said, "You know what, Jason? You put me in a situation. You put me in a situation. I didn't ask for the situation." you violated our friendship by putting me in an awkward situation where now I have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm negative against you and pro Noreen or vice versa is because you have put me in a situation um, that has caused me to have to either lie to a friend, keep a secret from a friend. And you've done that. So you didn't care two craps about me when you were doing whatever you were not supposed to be doing. And now you put me in a situation where I have to know this. No, that's not going to happen. So maybe that was, maybe that was the difference is that, um, you know, uh, I put you in an awkward position that you would have had to make a choice of either lie and keep a secret from everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. Or say, Hey, Jason, you're the one that's doing bad things. Screw you. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe that was the difference. Yeah. So See, as we, my mind's I'm getting old, but my mind's coming back to me, man. It's like a, it's like a steel trap up there. That's right. You know, so as we wrap up today's show, uh, if you have a secret confession or have or had a difficult conversation uh, you want to share but stay anonymous with, uh, you can DM us or you can just post it on our pages. Either way, at Luke McCurnage on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, if you have any tips for our EP, Tom and I to have some softening blows to those conversations that are that can be difficult. Hit him up on Twitter and Instagram at liquid underscore EP. I guess the biggest thing is don't have one of these conversations. It's not pretty, man. It's well, not pretty. <laughs> if you can avoid these conversations, that's probably for the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, Tom, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the reviews. Same time next year, I'm sure. Yeah, that are hereabouts. Yeah, right around St. Patrick's Day. Ah, that's right. This is being released on St. Patrick's Day. So uh, go have a green beer. Uh, kiss a Blarney stone, get some green beads or whatever the fuck you're supposed to do. That's right. There we go. Hey, thanks for the EP for joining us. That was awesome. Uh, everyone, we really appreciate you. Thanks for listening. That was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage.